Hey there everybody, Martin here and today it's time to get to the face of the workflow that's never really that popular, but you'll see it's not nearly as hard as many people think. Yeah, I'm talking about UVing. In the end though, this is just about making a few UV cuts on spots that are appropriate and everything will then unfold by itself. Almost. So let's jump right in and continue where we left off last time. First, divide your viewport like this and open up a UV texture editor. With the helmet selected, jump into the edit mode and select all of the faces with A. Now if you've been following the whole series properly, we've been adding some UV seams along the way, so this helmet is already quite cut out. We have a cut running here, as well as this one running all along the reinforced edge of the helmet. So what we can do now is to go ahead and try our first unwrap. Hit U and choose unwrap. In the UV window our helmet got unwrapped into three different parts now since we've divided it to three regions with these two cuts. Now all we need to check is how badly stretched these regions are and whether we should add more cuts to it. You can find that out by going into this menu here and in the view and stretching you activate this area command. And if you want to know more about stretching and UVing in general, you can watch the Architecture Asset series. Though it's probably not that necessary, since it's such a small region to make a difference, we can for example add a cut here, and for that you just basically hold shift select a certain edge like this, make sure you do it with the UV sync selection on, and then, since I've already added the mark seam command into my credit. Otherwise you find the command in the edge menu in the 3D viewport or in the UV menu of the UV editor. What we can also activate now is the live unwrap option and hit unwrap one more time. This will ensure that anytime we make a new cut from now on, the whole model will unwrap automatically. This way you don't have to hit mark seam over and over. This is also a proper time to finish up any changes to our model topology before you unwrap it. So you can now see me pushing some vertices and also we can go in and apply the scale of this object because we want to make sure it's the same in each dimension. To make it function properly, let's put this solidify modifier above our sub D. Also before the UV unwrap, I like to gather all my parts of this asset, shift select them and duplicate them. Then take the duplicates and with M put them in a new collection called BUP as backup, you know. One last thing we will do is to apply our modifiers, namely this solidify one. Go to the edit mode again and unwrap the thing, since after we applied the modifier it did not actually unwrap automatically. Now what do we have here? Basically the solidify modifier added two sides to our mesh, so we have everything doubled, which is good. One thing I like to do after applying solidify is to always go in, add an edge loop with Ctrl R to the solidified loop of faces and then make the created edge a seam. Now this looks quite good, but still a lot of green for my taste. We want to only have blue colors here. So let's add one more loop back here and make it a seam. Better. There's something wrong here. Though it's actually the inner part of the helmet, so it's not that important as the outer faces. But generally I think this will need one more cut somewhere to eliminate the greens a bit more. We'll do that later. But you know what? I'm actually not too sure about this cut back here. I think it's too much. So let's remove it. And still you can go around, play with your topology, it's still okay right until the point you finish your UVs and export your model to substance. Then it gets more problematic. So don't do it afterwards. Let's reset the unwrap again after we've played around with the vertices and let's keep looking for a good spot to add a new seam to get rid of the greens. My rule is that I don't want any red, orange, yellow and green colors in my UV unwrap. So generally deep blue and cyan are okay, but greens are generally something I don't want. Okay, sorry for wasting your time, but let's re-add the seam here after all. I've observed the whole model and I got a feeling that this is the only place I can actually put it to unwrap the UVs better. 
Let's now actually just very quickly unwrap the spiral. I think that will be easy. Here I think we can actually get rid of the solidify modifier. It would only make our job harder. And we need this actually just to stick a bit above the surface, not go all the way through it. So just delete the modifier. Now let's also fix its positioning a bit and also play around with the vertices. And uh, when that's done, I think, yep, the unwrap will be as simple as that. Since the object doesn't really have an other side, it's just a bent plane now. So good. Now this success may make your mood a bit better when you're stuck on other parts of the mesh. You can always cheer yourself up with some easier object to unwrap. A step that we can make when we are a bit stuck to make this a little easier or rather visually apparent is to add a UV texture to our helmet material. So let me just select the helmet and add an image texture node here in the shading editor. Load a UV texture that you can download from the project files for this video. Link is of course in the description and then plug it into the base color socket. This way, when we switch to the material preview, we can see exactly how large relative to each other and how stretched various regions of the UVs are. For example, here, you can see that the numbers and rectangles on the helmet are much larger than the ones on the spiral. So we're just gonna quickly fix that. Let's select both the helmet and the spiral and actually have a shader editor as well as UV editor here. Now in the edit mode, select all the faces and with it, hit this average island scale in the UV editor's UV menu. This way we've made all of the UV islands scaled the same way relative to each other. And in the material preview mode, you can now clearly see that. Let me actually just hit control T on this image texture node. This will plug in the mapping node if you have a node wrangler add-on activated, of course. With it, set this to scale four, just so that we see more of the texture repeated four times. And you can also see that we have a problematic region here. Other areas seem fine, but not this one. Let's unwrap just to be sure all is reset. And also we can go higher with this number to make the texture even better visible. Well, guess what now? We have forgotten something. This sub D modifier at a level of three here. If we delete it, this stretching goes away. Generally, I admit I often leave my sub D modifiers unapplied even throughout and after the UVing process, but mostly just at the level of one or two, because just like in our case, level three may cause these stretching problems. What I also did at this point was removing these two seams and adding a new one instead of it up here. This gave me a slightly better result. So in the end, I added a subdivision modifier at a level of two and left it as it is for now. We will actually apply it later. I then added two cuts for the crest holder on these two sides, unwrapped, and then added two more cuts, one here and one with the X-ray active here. Of course, we need to continue the cut up here as well. So first separate this inner edge of the crevice holding the crest. Then we can simply continue our seam down here. So select these edges, make a seam, and then alt select these two and mark seam as well. And lastly, don't forget to finish it off with this one. Yep, better, no oranges now. Though hardly ideal still. But I think now it's just about dividing these two. So select them and mark seam. There is a little orange area here too. So alt select and mark. As you can see, you basically just go around your model, find problematic areas that are not blue or cyan and cut where it makes sense to cut. Not in the middle of a large group of faces, but usually somewhere along the edges or 90 degree angles and crevices. Generally somewhere where a texture seam is not straight in your face, but well hidden. Actually, let me just select this edge loop in the UV viewport and mark it to ease out this area. Then we have this yellowish region here. So let me cut it. Uh, let's alt select these edges, cut them, and then alt select this seam and clear it since it's too close to the other one now. So it's redundant. 
With that, we only have this green area here. And when we zoom in on it, I think we will actually need a loop cut around the geometry to select the whole edge with all select and mark it. Nope, that didn't do it. So maybe this edge will help. Yep, that one worked. And this edge here, I think it's a logical area to cut too. Yep, that eased our result. One last green area here, so select it in the UV editor and it shows up in your 3D viewport as well. Hmm, this is a weird spot, don't really know what's causing the stretch, but since it's inside the crevice meant for the hair particles, it doesn't really matter too much, it won't be visible anyway. So if you tell no one, I won't either. Cool. One last look at the helmet now, and let's pack this thing. By the way, don't be surprised, I will repeat this packing operation several times. I usually do it like that, until I am happy with the result. So, I warned you, it will be like three times. For packing the UVs, I am actually using this UV Packmaster add-on. But still, you can see that there is this very long island, taking up a lot of space in our layout and we want to fill it as dense as possible. So I think in this case, we can just cut it in half here. Good, that laid it out more efficiently. We still have some green here, but again, on a spot where it will not be visible. So don't stress it. For spots like these, green is good enough. There are still these two cheek piece areas though, so since I think it will probably make me not sleep if I don't deal with them, <laughs> let's cut both of these here. Yeah, better. And with that we can make another backup with duplicated pieces of the helmet, make a collection BUP2, hide it with this check icon, and then select the helmet and apply the sub demodifier at a level of one. This will give us quite enough of polygons to work with. Make one last pack with these two. And now when I think about it, let's have a look. This island is actually upside down. So we can maybe select these parts of the island, uh, select one face of it, hit control L to select the whole island and rotate them with R 180 degrees just to make some manual paint in 2D viewport easier later. Make sure these don't overlap of course, uh, just hit G to move the regions. Select the helmet and the crest holder since these are the only objects we will be exporting and jump into edit mode and select all their faces. Average island scales and then one last time hit pack either in the regular UV dialog or in the UV Packmaster add-on, both are fine, though Packmaster does it much better, leaving fewer empty spaces. And that's it. Of course one more thing you have to do is to make sure that the helmet and the crest holder have the same material and name it properly of course, Calcidian helmet. Don't forget to apply a sub demodifier at a level of 1 to the crest holder, as we did for the helmet. Make sure that you have applied the scale to both of those objects. And then one last time, unwrap everything and repack it. And we're ready to export and start working in Substance Painter. So let's do it in the next lesson. Oh and by the way, if you like, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. So if you have any ideas, feedback or questions, don't hesitate to write them. Also, check my Substance Painter course at CG Boost. That's one thing I have been working on for past several months. And if I may say so, it's the best course I've done so far. And I also have a Patreon as well, where you can download all of the assets for my tutorials, along with other bonuses, models, materials and much more. So if you like this project, consider supporting me there I'd be eternally grateful for that. But with that, I hope you had a blast and see you next time. Martin out.